Welcome back to Black News Tonight. It is time to take a look at what's happening in these digital streets. And here to help me process it all is the brilliant Dr. Brittany Cooper, Associate Professor at Rutgers University. Dr. Cooper, thank you for joining me. What's up, Mark? <laughs> She like, he a fool. All right, first up, Naomi Osaka is withdrawing from the upcoming Wimbledon tournament. According to a statement released by her agent, Osaka is, quote, taking personal time with friends and family. But she plans to compete at the Tokyo Olympics, uh, later adding that she is excited to play in front of her home fans. If you recall, uh, the 23-year-old four-time Grand Slam champion also withdrew from the French Open, citing mental health concerns. What say you, Dr. Cooper, about this decision? I'm so happy that she's showing us that she matters more than her work. She matters more than fame. She's taking care of herself and she's taking the time that she needs to heal and refusing that demand uh, that capitalism makes of us to always tie our value to our productivity uh, and to our ability to make money for folks who actually don't care about us uh, is a problem that so many black women struggle with. And so she's really resetting the model. Uh, she's creating boundaries around her career uh, and she's letting us all know that she doesn't owe us anything. Uh, and as a avid tennis fan uh you know it is a pleasure to watch naomi play uh, and i appreciate that she is telling us that she plays when she wants to uh, and on her own terms and i wish that kind of freedom for all black women i was going to say there's the, there's the the intersection of race and gender here too because it seemed like when she said she was going to take care of her mental health some people including some black men <laughs> were like you better work, you get paid for this, this is the job, uh, you know, stop being a baby, et cetera, et cetera. And it felt to me that some of this extra expectation or labor that was being placed on her, as you said, was not just because of capitalism, but also because of the particular ways that black women are engaged. Absolutely. I mean, people expect, you know, black women to engage the strong black woman myth. And sometimes even black women can be derisive to other black women who choose not to play the game. And we say like, why are you being weak? You know, girls suck it up. It's hard out here. And look, I have a little bit of that a little bit of that sort of like gather yourself, we grind, we hustle, life is hard and we don't get to be gentle. But I think that what I also support is the right of black women to make choices and to have agency. Um, and I do think that that is the thing we have been fighting for. I also think that most of us do not have to do our jobs on a national stage where millions of people are watching us um, and judging our every move. Uh, and so I think that Naomi is carving her own path. And I also think that she's benefiting from the fact that even though she is, you know, a, in rarefied air, she hasn't had to be a trailblazer in the way that the Williams sisters have had to be. And so they had to take a lot of hits when they came into the game to prove themselves. Now that they have done that, she is saying, okay, our talent is not questionable. So now I'm going to actually try to work you know, have working conditions that are actually sustainable. And all of us as a culture need to be having a conversation about sustainable working conditions. And in fact, that's so much of what the pandemic has done is this is why you're seeing workers saying, we're not going back to these terrible, low paying jobs, you know, with unsustainable working conditions. And so she is part of a sea change and she is also a beacon helping us to really have that conversation. And I think we should respect it. I agree. Let's move on to another story before we run out of time here. All eyes were on last night's iconic versus battle between ah, the legendary Eve and the legendary Trina. Now I'm from Philly, so I had a little bit of bias, but the two went head to head for 90 minutes, taking yeah. fans down memory lane with each of their best and most memorable tracks. And while fans are scoring the matchup all across social media, it's fair to say that the real winner, of course, was music. Dr. Cooper, when you see these kind of legends, particularly black women, go on verses yeah. and it's all love, it's great music, they having a good time, they both doing well. How does it make you feel? I mean, it makes me feel like, you know, perhaps Gucci and Jeezy should take a note uh, from the Eve and Trina catalog mm. and not, you know, and just not use versus as a beef to do some things for the fans, right? So I love that they did it for the culture. Uh, but also they remind me of this moment that we grew up in, in the night, late 90s, early 2000s, where female MCs were all the rage. And so we need to chart that history again and chart their contributions because we're now seeing the game, you know, come back and, you know, and, and women MCs are all over the hip hop charts in this moment. You got Meg, you got Sweetie, you got Doja Cat, you got all of these fierce, 
you know, chicks out here really spitting and doing their thing, but they are part of a legacy and a lineage of an earlier moment. One, a, a legacy and lineage begun by your earlier guest, Angie Stone, and then moving to folks like Trina and Eve, uh, and now moving to these young chicks. And so it was, you know, it's super cool to see. Uh, and I'm glad that they showed love. Uh, you know, because we can have a different model of what it means to be in hip hop. And so, yeah, you can be a fierce competitor, uh, but you can also respect your competition as being equal. Dr. Cooper, I got about 20 seconds. The next verses, I ain't talking about Soldier Boy and, and Bow Wow. I don't care about that. Well, I'm no. talking about the next verses mm -hmm. that you want to see. I want to make you the curator of verses because even though she got them PhDs and all them degrees and she all dignified and got all them books and she, she even read all of them behind her, she still like good music and she still likes to let loose sometimes. She can turn up. So who do you want to see on the versus stage? Oh my, oh my God, you put me on the spot. Um, look, I think we need male Don't hip hop country. R and B. Uh, nah, we need somebody from the from the nineties. So you know, I'm gonna do this one for you. So how about we put a uh, high five uh, against uh, boys to men? R.I.P. Tony Thompson. <laughs> That is what I'm talking about. See, Brittany Cooper has not been co-opted by the Jodeci lobby. She has not been taken over. She understands that High Five is the legendary R&B group. Rest in peace, Tony Thompson. They're still going to hold it down. Dr. Cooper, thank you for that. Just for that, you can come back anytime you want. Boys to men, High Five, y'all write it up. Everybody stay with us. We got much more.